Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gates Sports Bar. In the next 10 minutes we'll bring you all you need to know about your favourite Bristol sport teams. Plus I'm joined by Martin Griffiths for an exclusive tour around the West Stand. But first we start with football and after a fantastic away win at Nottingham Forest I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by head coach Lee Johnson and uh, it was indeed a fantastic away win. Yeah, fantastic result. Uh, well pleased because obviously we had a not a great result on the Tuesday night and, a, and not a great performance but to go to a place like Nottingham Forest and come away with a win especially after going a goal down was a great achievement for the players. Now you have come in and you've really had to hit the ground running. It has been a good few weeks for you. It's been a busy few weeks. What's it been like from your perspective coming back to Ashton Gate at such an important time in the club's history and the stadium's history? It's been great. I've loved it. Um, like I say, I'm delighted to come back. Just seeing everybody that I've, I've known from the past, uh, old friends, but also the club. And I think to come back is great for me. I love it to see what's happened to the place since I left and also we've had a, had a few good results so you're right it's really important that we continue uh, the running if you like you said hit the ground running we've got to continue that and uh, I'm sure we can. Just talk us through some of your thoughts when when you came and actually had a look because Bristol Sport is quite unique and it is, is quite a different position for you to come into. Yeah well I've stayed in contact obviously with Steve um, while I've been away and also Keith Dorr on the board and, and listen to the plans of the place and, and actually to see it uh, actually, like I say, come to fruition now is amazing. Uh, for me as well, particularly as a young coach, you've got to remember I've still got an awful lot to learn, particularly in the leadership element. And it's great because if we can sort of uh, share ideas with all the coaches uh, amongst the group, that's great for me because I've missed that. I've been so busy uh, in my three and a half years so far management that I've missed sort of travelling the world and speaking to different coaches and leaders and learning from the best and I think if we can use this sort of environment to share ideas then it can only be uh, a benefit for all of us. I know when I was uh, talking to Sean Holly who heads up with Bristol Rugby with Andy Robinson the coaching sort of side of it and picking team selection is always such a headache especially with the worry of thinking about players getting injured for rugby it's the idea of going into the playoffs and you know everyone's wanting a, t a, a place in the team but you don't want them to get injured what how do you apply that to yours because it must always be a headache of, of picking which team to put out. Yeah it's difficult um, you've always got various sort of influences uh, amongst team selection, it could be players knocking on your door, it could be your assistant manager, your coaching staff, it could be the owner's favourite player, it could be the fans, uh, sort of the key icon at the club. And uh, I always personally go back to, if my little girl's life depended on it, uh, what team would I pick? And I think that's so important because you can get clouded by other people's judgment and sometimes you've just got to make sure that the most important thing in the world to you, which is obviously my little girl for me, uh, and, and you get that clarity from that and uh, it becomes such a difficult process uh, that you need that. Yeah, gosh, that would give you clarity, I'm sure. Uh, and particularly in, in football, I mean, we've talked about cross sports and, and the different ways that the, the crowds, the fans react. Football is probably uh, the loudest, shall we say, in terms of vo voicing their happiness or their displeasure. Um, for you, I guess you, you've encountered that on both sides of the coin as a player now and as a coach. Yeah, and I think it comes with the territory. Uh, you've got to make sure that you stay consistent because it's very emotional football and very fickle. Um, so for me, my whole career I've had sort of adversity, obviously being a small player as well, um, in, a, in a time where small players were rarely played in my position. So uh, I've had to make sure that I keep sort of proving people wrong. And uh, I think if you've got that sort of work ethic and ethos, uh, like we have at this club then we can move mountains and uh, hopefully I'll be a part of that for a long time to come. Now this weekend you faced the seven side derby and I know you've got a bit of a history in this, you played in a fair few of them yourself. Yep, yeah, all great games, uh, I need to get across to the players how important it is uh, for the fans because this is a big game for Bristol City, make no mistake and uh, I'm sure they know that. Um, but through personal experience sometimes I can help them and I've had some good days and bad days against Cardiff and uh, when you have the good days uh, the fans love it and it's really important that we deliver for them. I remember going on loan to Derby and uh, I was playing at Plymouth away and uh, Bristol City had um, Cardiff at home under my dad and I went to take a corner uh, about 44 minutes into the game and uh, I had the whole of the Plymouth crowd singing Dad's getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> So I wondered what on earth had happened and uh, when I went in I realised that I think it was 5-0 down at half-time at home 
um, and that was a very difficult time for the club. I ended up coming back and uh, it was good because we, we picked up a little bit but uh, it's funny you get those ups and downs and against Cardiff we seem to have had both. I also remember the fantastic tackle that my dad done on uh, Chopra as he scored the goal. I don't know if you remember that, he was running down the line, Chopra having just scored. My dad felt he was uh, taking the mickey a little bit so he stuck his leg out and Chopper went flying and uh, that was a, a real funny moment in the dressing room. Well let's hope uh, there are some happy and positive moments on Saturday in the dressing room. Best of luck and thanks very much for coming thanks in to talk lot. to us. Cheers Lisa. Well, City women uh, suffered a heartbreaking defeat in a penalty shootout at the weekend in the SSE FA Cup fourth round following a goalless draw at home to local rivals Yeovil on Sunday. The Vixens, though, they do get a chance for revenge when they face Yeovil once again at the very opening day of the WSL2 season. That will be at Stoke Gifford Stadium. Tickets for that one are on sale. Just head to the website. Well, to Rugby Now and Bristol secured their place in the championship playoffs on Sunday after a convincing win over Yorkshire at Carnegie. And we caught up with Director of Rugby Andy Robinson after the match. Yeah, good performance. Uh, there was a bit of uh, rope-a-dope at the beginning of the game where we having to make a lot of tackles and soak up a lot of pressure. Uh, and we conceded you know, one try. Uh, I thought you know, we were giving too many penalties away, which you know, Tom Bondo rightly seemed bend you know, for knocking the ball down. So you know, we had to work hard there, but you know, the tackles were good and uh, only to concede seven points and then get six points in that period when Tom was off was important for us. And that was good game management. Well, Bristol ladies played their part once again in the Six Nations tournament at the weekend and it saw Bristol teammates lining up against each other as Sarah Hunter, Amber Reid, Izzy Noel-Smith, Katie Mason and Poppy Leach lined up against Ireland and fellow teammate Claire Malloy at Twickenham. Hunter led England to a narrow victory over defending champions Ireland, 13-9 to it was, with two tries and the penalty points added by Amber Reid. All of that means that England now sit top of the women's table and Hunter dreaming of a first Six Nations crown since 2012. We've always said along um, before the competition that we take one game at a time and, and we've certainly built through through the competition so far and, and built on our performances and, and we've got the results as well. Um, and especially since Wales uh, beat France, we know that we've always known that they they've got huge huge threat um, and will come to the stoop um, in a week's time and, and, and do exactly the same. So we're thinking no further ahead than, than the Wales game. We're getting down to the sort of nitty gritty of the of the competition now and it, it's it's going to take a two big performances again for for us to see where we finish now to something slightly different and this weekend sees the british water polo championships coming to town as bristol central take on the gb juniors well i spoke to bristol central captain andy crawford at training earlier in the week so we've got uh, first game against GB uh, juniors, well under 18s, and it's fantastic to have them in this competition just so they can uh, uh, sort of experience British water polo at the highest level. And we've also got Invicta, who uh, they finished I think, fourth this season. So again, it's been tough competition. So those two games are coming up uh, in March, and then we'll uh, travel up to Lancaster for the final game of the group round. And they're, they're again a very successful club in history. So it's not going to be easy, uh, but yeah, like I say, we back ourselves to get three victories and go through uh, from uh, up to the semi-finals. Well, while they're busy in the pool at Hengrove, on the other side of town, the Bristol Flyers return to action this weekend as they look to climb up the table and into the playoff spaces as they take on fourth-placed Sheffield Sharks. I think if we can keep them to one shot and then try to play our game as well and try to get up and down a little bit, maybe we'll be able to wear them down that way, but only time will tell. I think the key will be to try to keep them off the offensive glass. So keep them to one shot uh, and then try to go and transition the other way. we got some ground to make up, but... It's it's been that part of the season now where it's still doable right now. We just uh, have to stay focused and take it one game at a time. And it looks like another sellout at the SGS Wise Arena with just a few tickets left for Saturday's game. Check out the website for more details. Tip off for that at half past seven. Well, March is the month for Grand Prix as the F1 season returns. It kicks off in Melbourne and just a couple of days after it, we're looking forward to welcoming racing expert Mark Gallagher to Ashton Gate. Former Jordan executive, he's here as part of our big sports breakfast. Certainly not one to be missed, especially if you're a petrol head. Make sure you check out the website for all the details. 
Well, finally, as we promised at the start of the programme, we had an exclusive tour of the West Stand as it is nearing completion. The corporate boxes are all glazed in and I took a tour of it with Bristol Sport Chairman Martin Griffiths. Well, Martin, we've come up to uh, where the corporate boxes are and as you would expect, as you step out, these really are the best seats in the house. They are. The, the view from here is absolutely fantastic. We've got uh, 18 uh, corporate boxes plus the director's box running along the west flank of the pitch here. Um, and uh, this, is, this is where you're sat to get a real fence, sense and perspective of the game. Yeah. What is interesting about these boxes, I mean, A, they're, they're very large compared with a lot of other football grounds, but also you've got a lot of options in how you divide them. Yes, and I think that's not just on match day, but on non-match day as well. One of the key things for us, if we go back, was this whole financial sustainability. And this stadium needs to pay its way 365 days of the year. So these boxes are configured to be very flexible as meeting rooms and as conference rooms on those, on those non-match days. So they can go from singular boxes to double to even quadruple? Yes, in one case we can open up four of them with uh, these fold-back partitions to create um, a, a, a meeting room which is four times the size of a standard box. Uh, and that's all been part of the plan and approaching the local corporate market for that business. You talk about the non-match day activity. Uh, last weekend saw Ashton Gates host the very first wedding. But it is that, that multi-use that, that is so crucial. It is, and uh, the, I mean the facilities will be here to do all of that, and um, you know uh, weddings from just 40 or 50 people, small weddings, all the way up to uh, if anyone fancies it, weddings of six to 800. Who knows? But uh, it, it's it's all here. The facilities are here, and a lot of this will be new to Bristol. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the program. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a minute of the action. In the meantime, have a great weekend of Bristol sport.